Oh, come on, come on, I'll take you around for a quick tour. Really? Tour. Yeah, come on. I wasn't expecting that. Let's have a quick tour. So, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're here in Bristol, Avonmouth, taking a look at Petty Forrester refrigerated vehicle rental. Now, we often see these refrigerated trailers, don't we? But we have no idea of where they come from, if they're owned, if they're hired, what sort of maintenance needs to happen, how often, how they're powered, any regulations. So, I think now's the time to find out. So, on the front, Thermo King is one of the most popular names. Basically, this front section is the fridge and the control panel for the fridge is just there that one says smart reefer Hi, mate, all right? yeah i'm okay what are you up to just a little video about the refrigerated trailers right just for youtube okay but uh, i'll stay outside unless you want me to come in uh, but, but normally i stay video, out the way what's the video for interesting places on industrial estates oh right okay i'm just trying to understand it uh, refrigerated unit on the front yeah how is it actually powered is it through the diesel from the, the truck it's powered by its own individual on, oh, the, trailer. on the trailer it's powered yeah. by its own individual tank tank where's the tank on that one where so, is the tank is it visible no it's not visible so is it within the it be, some of them are in the within the, within on they're on the chassis yeah. there where it depending on which side it is probably on the near side somewhere are you talking a big tank that's visible like this yeah. sort of size yeah Surely I'd be able to see it, wouldn't I? No, depending on where it is, mate. So are they targets for diesel theft then? Is no. that why? No. No. Are they not well known? That um, each trailer with a refrigerated it unit? It depends where they're, it depends where they're mounted to. It, yeah. Right. So some are mounted on the chassis and some are run off of, or some are run off of, if you were talking, if we're looking at a rigid over there, they are also run off of a fuel tank. So they've got a separate fuel tank but they're not, they've normally got knocking caps on them anyway, so. Right. Is, not, there any, is there any instances where there's no tank on the trailer, but it's powered through the diesel on the tractor unit or not? Right. No. They're all standalone then? They're standalone, yeah. Right. And is there any occasions where it's not powered by diesel? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, hydraulic. What? Hi, what? Hydraulic off the tractor unit. All oh, right. Like a pump, like electric pump, yeah. So the diesel motor is pumping some sort of hydraulic yeah. into to turn something that makes the refrigerator? Like electric motor. Yeah. What sort of temperatures did it go down to? It depends on the body and the spec, but yeah, minus 20, minus 25. Right. And what's the most... Because is, it, is it a fridge or, or a freezer? It depends on the spec. It depends on the spec, but, yeah. yeah that, that's a freezer. But it's a combination of the power of the unit and the insulation in the body. So if somebody wanted to hire one of these, is it weekly, monthly? Um, yeah, it can be. Uh, weekly, monthly, yearly, depends. Yeah. Right, OK. Yeah. So one unit per month... On a, on a customer that's never been with you before. About 1,300 quid. 1,300? Yeah. You can do yeah. a lot of business with that, couldn't you? To yeah. make that money back. Mm. So when we see these around then, are they most likely from a place like this, hired? So you deal with the maintenance? Yeah, trailer companies, yeah. Trailer hire companies, yeah. Is it rare for somebody to own their own? Um, no, no. People do no, it's quite common, mate, yeah. to every company to own Cause, their own. Because they run them quite a long time, look. Right. Because, again, you haven't got, technically, you've got the fridge engine, but you haven't got a... It's not a bit different to a vehicle because it's just being dragged along. So, and does certain things have to be done so often? Yeah, yeah, you've got to because it's got you've got to service them every six months, as it, opposed to if it was a trailer by itself. Trailer, it's trailer on itself would need to be depending on what the customer's op O license was. So, depending on the mileage that the customer's put into the traffic commissioner, it could be six weekly, eight weekly, twelve weekly. Right. So that would just be for the chassis alone. Well, we service every six months and need F gas. So basically, it's, it's for all intents and purposes, it's a standalone unit, really. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something else that needs its own oh, yeah. Yeah. looking after. It needs its own, its own maintenance. Um, it's not uncommon, like you said, for lots of companies now to buy them because of the the initial outlay isn't that isn't that great. To be fair, when you look at buying a trailer, probably looking at sixty thousand pound. Six so, zero. Yeah, so if you keep that for seven or eight years, nine years maybe, it's it far outweighs the cost of hiring. Lots of companies in that Tesco, Sainsbury's, got their own fleet. Lots of even one man bands own their own trailers. And do they have the facility to do what's required servicing the refrigerated unit? Probably as well? not. It's a specialist 
it's a specialist. You guys thing. do. We uh, yeah. the petite forestier specialise in, yeah. Oh right, so that's your that's our specialism. Niche, yeah. That's our right, niche in okay. the market. So if you were to have a look at everything we've got here, it has a fridge on. Yeah, I've noticed. So different yeah. styles. So we've got the the little vans, the fridge is at the top there. Yeah, I've noticed. Uh, the bigger, obviously the same again, but everything we have here, the only thing it won't that we look after is tractor units. Right. But everything else has a fridge on it. Right, okay. What's the most common thing that goes wrong? On the fridge? Yeah. Or are they Probably quite reliable gas nowadays? Leak gas leak, yeah, so it'll be uh, sight glass, dryer. Yeah, the little vans are more reliable because they're electrically driven. It's separate engines, so it's got its own engine, so you've got all your lubricants, right. coolant, everything. So gas. But generally, they're, they are pretty reliable. Are they? Yeah. Right. Obviously, the older you get, you've got to remember is that they work in hours. Right. Fridges work in hours as opposed to the chassis that works in kilometres. So that fridge... It, if we, use, if we use, for example, that fridge may well have done far in excess hours of that being on the road because it could be stood up with the fridge on. So with it being disconnected from the tractor unit then, you, you will, it is possible for us to see some of these on site with the fridge running. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can plug them into electric. You can plug them into the standby. You, you've got your, but, oh, come and have a quick look. Do, do you know if a company is choosing to leave it running on diesel rather than plugged in. Surely plugged in is better practice, isn't it? Yeah, plugged in. So there we go, there's your, there's your standby plug. All oh, right, okay. You, lead, you plug it into your electric and then it, it runs, it's much more reliable, more efficient. With that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, running an electric motor that's inside there rather than an engine running it. Right. The other option is a cold store. If so you're it, using it parked up and not right. driving it anywhere, you're better off having a cold store. Right. And here's your fuel tank. It's mounted across there. That's what you can't see. So, because of the chassis configuration, because this is a half chassis, yeah, it's mounted across there. So it's all that. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. some will. I never be, would have known. Some will be depending on the chassis yeah, type. If yeah, you've yeah. got a full chassis, and what I mean by a full chassis is a continuation of the rigid beams there all the way to the end. They class that as a full chassis. Then you will have a fuel tank mounted off of there. Right, nice one. And this is quite thick insulated, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, if you want to have a quick, if you want to have a quick look. You're probably talking the insulation, probably round about that thickness. Wow. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can get. You can't get an idea of how thick. But then, if you look at. If you look at the back of there, yeah, I can so see. You're probably yeah. looking round about yeah. that thickness. And is that another refrigerated unit? So it's not just pumping from the front. You've got them in the middle as well. You've got when you've got them in the middle as well there. So that is. Can I get a shot of that? Yeah, sure. And is that normal then to have two? It depends on it depends on the setup for the customer because this one will be. You've got you've got a you've got a bulkhead door there. So you can separate, so you can have frozen and chilled. Oh, you have a yeah. That's movable, is it? That's meant that will that will come down in that position where it is. So you see, you've got the cleat hooks, which they call them, on the top into the trailer. That stows the door. So if they want it to bulk off, move them off. Do you know what I mean? So they had, say, for example, they had something that had to be kept at minus twenty. For example, minus ten this end. That's what they can do. Right, I've got you. Yeah, those little clips there. So it's got another unit so that it can have two temperatures have inside. Two temperatures, yeah. Nice one. Well, you won't get. That. I did did not expect to learn all you that. Won't get that on the likes of these. All right. You won't get. You've only got the one fridge at there, so that's the one at the front. So that's what you see. So you won't get because of the style of these. Now, what they're supposed to do is if they were out delivering, you'll see you've got different, you've got these flaps here. They are supposed to be left bank when you're out delivering. So that sort of keeps, because you'll have a temperature difference then. So when the minute this is fruit cold, they open these up, warm air, cold air meet. Yeah. They're supposed to be kept down. Yeah. That shouldn't even be over the blower fans there. That should be just kept down. Yeah. But that's the difference in that's the difference in styles that you'll Wow. And I see that was pretty airtight, weren't it as well? 
Yes, the new ones have an, have an electronic curtain. We haven't got any of them. Um, which basically does the same thing as that. The minute the doors open, they operate on air. They, they, form, they form a seal. So, so do you hire the vehicles with the refrigerated units? Oh yeah, you've yes, got, we do. You've yeah. got your little logo on the Is that how we can recognize it then? That's how, we, it... that's how you can recognize a petite vehicle. What you should see is there'll be, you should always be, France want one of those on there. And on every vehicle, this is how many vehicles in Europe Petit have. So this was 101,053. Wow. That was 59. Because they're all, this is the same customers, they'll all be in that batch range. Wow. So that's how you recognize that if it hasn't got Petit or a badge on the back. So this one's come back from a customer, eh, David, as you can see. They've de decoded it. You've still got you still got the remnants that you can see who had it first, but easily identifiable. Yeah. That's 86,871. And that was there even when they did have that livery on. Yep, that was there. And with that on there as well. So it's a standard France always want to see. The same with our trailers. You can see they've got the same, obviously not to the degree that you've got the big one, but you've got the 65 number, easily identifiable. Yeah. That's how you know, unless it's in the petite logo, which, and now, to be honest with you, very few are. This one, for example, is one of ours. It's missing off the front. It's had a new wing. <laughs> Fronts are not gonna be happy with that. And it's had new wing. So when this one comes back, so when bishops decide they don't want it anymore, straight away we charge for two right. stickers to be fitted right. and a plate on the front. And the customer will get charged that because it's damaged. You yeah. only replace wings if they're damaged. They're not a worn item. Yeah. They can't just fall off. And I bet they agreed to that when they took out yeah, the van. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. do agree. It makes to sense. It. So, so I noticed you're up to like a hundred thousand now, aren't you? That, that yeah, was that sixty five. That was this trailer's nine years old. So, so what's nine... the latest number? Do you know? Are you up to one hundred and fifty thousand yet? Or is a hundred the highest you've seen? Seventy one. We're probably up about one hundred twenty five thousand. Wow. Trailer. That's mental, um, isn't it? Um, we, and are the earlier numbers still on the road? No, the earliest numbers would have been would have been scrapped. Yeah. Now, so what we've got currently, we've got thirteen hundred chassis in build, various vehicles. So what we try to do now is we're trying to take the older vehicles off the road. So if we were to have a look here, for example, just to give you a rough idea of where we are. It's fascinating. If we were to look at now we've got we've got a fifteen plate. We want to get rid of the 15 and 16 plate vans that we've got here. I see what number that is. 63,000 that go. is. So we want to take, so if you work that out, and so five, so that's 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, in five years, six years, we've gone from that to 101,000. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is taking now all those vehicles the older ones, the 15s, the 16s, and 17 plates, with an age profile, just take them off of our fleet list and put the new vehicles in. So it obviously increases the customer reliability, yeah. drops our cost, although the residual value, the value of buying the truck, the van item is the same, but it reduces our maintenance spend every month yeah, so, or every week. So the newer the kit we've got, we're only really going to be doing wear and tear items and inspections yeah. and servicing. It which makes cost, sense. It's sort of like there should certainly be a fixed cost in any damage which the customer will pick up on yeah. and they'll pay for. So the damage is where we're self-funded. Yeah. Customer damages it is in our best of interest. We want to do the work because that's our recharge. Yeah. That's extra on top of the revenue we get per van. Yeah. So if we give you an example, I think the vans are going out roughly at about £1,600 a month. Right. We don't do spot hire, so if somebody wanted a week, it would be very touch and go whether you would get a week, yeah. depending on, if you were a new customer, you wouldn't. If you were an existing customer and they said, we want that trailer for a week, we'd, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Walking off the street, slightly different. That we could, don't do spot hire, where a lot of companies like Enterprise would do, you can go in and hire on the spot. It's just like hiring a car. It's no different than hiring a car. It's and and have you got availability, have you? Um, or are you pretty much? Well, at the moment, we're right. Um, give you a bit of a rough idea at the moment. We're probably 88% utilised of our fleet. So you have so got some then. So with 88 
percent, but twelve, and the rest of the twelve percent is VOR. So twelve percent is in the workshop. Ah, but that right. doesn't just count as in my workshop. We cover an area here. We go up to Hereford, um, then we go across down into Carmarvon, the, uh, or the other side of Carmarvon. So basically near Fishguard, yeah. And then we cover as far down as Willem in Devon, called Devon. Wow. So we cover quite a vast area from here, here from this from side. Here. Yeah. So we look at not we don't do the work but we'll control third party workshops. So we'll tell them what that needs to be done from an inspection point of view. Order all their parts, all in their paperwork, and just check on everything that they do. Because it's your name on the paperwork, innit, at the yeah. end of the day? Even though they sign it off, it's our vehicle. Yeah. We need to make sure that, it's, that the paperwork is compliant. Yeah. It shouldn't touch wood, should there be an accident with those and get the DVSA or VOSA involved. It, we don't want to. Currently, with these trailers you see here, we've got another, another six down there. Yeah. Those, and with that one then, they will be going out to Sainsbury's at the end of this week. Are they all Thermo King units? Or that second one's different, isn't it? The second one's Carrier. So they range from... We are Carrier's biggest... The Carrier's biggest... Um, purchaser of their product in Europe. What about Thermo King? Not so much. Right. I think at the time, I could probably say it was just the fact that... I think it was probably just the fact that it was what was, what was on the shelf at the time. So these customers, these trailers have come out of a, cus a customer called Peter's Pies, right. but based in Wales, and we put nine new ones in. Right. So we put nine new, brand new trailers into them. And one of the hydraulic lines is also able to <coughs> power them? The one, they're very few and far between. Right, okay. So not in that case fleet. then? Not in that right. case, not in that case, not at all. So this that is one, simply electric or diesel? Electric or diesel, yeah. And if it's standalone, it's not connected, it should be electric? It, could, it should be because yeah. that's where you plug in off of that. Although on this, it doesn't really make that great deal of difference. It will make difference on this one. So if you, let's have a look. I'll show you, just give you an example. Best one, best example to give you would be, yeah, this, this one. Yes, use this then. Right, so. As you may well may or well or not well know or not know that if you were to run this vehicle to run this fridge and you were running it on diesel, you'd have to have the engine running. Yeah. You'd have to to run it. You have to have the engine running, right? Yeah. So if you have the engine running, that creates idle time. Yeah. Now, idle time will have an impact on the premature failure of components on the engine. On the engine of the on the engine vehicle's, vehicle's engine. engine, right? But if you run it off electric, the engine's not. Because if you think about it, turns of wheel is registered on your odometer. Yeah. It doesn't. It measures travel. It measures distance. Yeah. That doesn't measure hours. So what we used to have is customers would run it. Then instead of plugging in, run run it all day with the engine yeah. on idle, and then wonder why in maybe two years time we get engine failures because yeah. it's prematurely been up fridge has been idling yeah okay obviously you wouldn't see that from the engine the mileage it has done but a lot of customers have got the standby standby points in their premises so it's always something to consider then when you buy one of these second hand the idle time which you never know yeah, you, you never know you're never going to know it. unless it's been uh, people have been properly that you never know the idle time yeah. On an oh, engine. Okay. You never know the idle time. Well, I've learned quite a lot, my friend. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. I'll let you get back to work. I'll go back out there. I'll just do a, a perimeter tour with the drone and then I'll put it on my YouTube channel and uh, people will learn a little bit about this. Yeah, by, by all means. And so. it, will, it will make Petty Forester look very good. Well, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. The, the channel that the YouTube video will go on is there, DJ oh. Audits. So okay, yeah. Thank you very much. Brilliant. What was no your problem. first name? Justin. No, thank you, Justin. You've no been a pleasure to talk to. No thank problem. You. If you were, um, yeah, it's, it's, we've got quite a big... Oh, come on, come on, I'll take you around for a quick tour. Really? Yeah, come on. I wasn't expecting that. Let's have a quick tour. It gives me a bit of a break from the office. Have a quick tour. So... We have four elements to Bristol. We have truck workshop. 
Yep. So that is anything 7.2 tons and above. Right. And we have van workshop, which is anything up to 3.5 ton. Right, okay. We have our own wash bay facilities here. So we wash and ballot our own trucks and vans right. before we rent them out. We have another function here, which is called Le Capitan. Now, Le Capitan are our bodybuilders. They're run by France, but they are part of Petite Forest. We're linked with them, Petite Forestier. Right, oh, okay. So we are linked with them, which also we've got a spray shop in there right. as well. Um, down here, down here we have our brake roller tester. Wow. And also our fridge engineers. So trailer brakes are all also tested, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, trailer brakes are also tested. All brakes, any brake repair you do on a commercial vehicle, this on and no license needs to be brake tested. So the idea, what we what we do here, we do a loaded RBT, which is a brake roller test, every inspection. Right. So that way then it complies with those. So you don't have to do one, but good practice is to do that. But they want to see four a year. Four a year. But right. anytime you do a brake repair, so if we were doing this on that now, we'd do a loaded brake test. So it's operating in road conditions. Yeah. So it'd be at the customer's weight, what well, customers will run it loaded. And then if something should happen or something touch wood goes wrong, they can see that the brakes were performing at their optimum ah, right, and okay. there was nothing there. So we've got, we do specialise in containers as well. Well, that's refrigerated as well. Yeah. Can you, is the motor visible or is it inside? Um, I'm not too sure on these, if I'm honest with you, because this is only a new, this is only something new that they've um, ventured into. So this is only something new that they've ventured into. So I don't, uh, there we go. Oh, so it, it is within the... It's within, it's within the unit. Yeah. Obviously, again, this will only run off of, off electric. Wow. Whatever next. So this is what we've... So you can import refrigerated goods now. So this is where we are coming from now, where this is our new niche in what we do. Um, it's quite big on the, it's quite big on the continent. If I'm, if I'm honest with you, oh, it's locked. It, I don't know if it's taken off in the UK yet. Yeah. Um, I know one of these went out to Bath Royal Hospital for a couple of months. So again, as you can see, these, these trailers here, they're all ready to go out to Sainsbury's. They will be going out to Sainsbury's. And as you can see on this one, because they're all half chassis, the fuel tanks are in the same transverse place. behind the fifth wheel. Um, we'll give you a bit of an example. Here we go. This is, I guess, this, this is one of these will be a good one. And if I remember really, it's here. Here we go. So, there's your, there's your fridge fuel tank there. Oh, right. So, so years ago, they used to run on red diesel. Okay. Which wasn't taxed. So now they run on normal fuel. So it's a lot so, more expensive. So, as you can see, this one, they... Uh, you're probably right. It's probably... Uh, <laughs> we've not suffered any... That's a... It's not a locking cap. Some do have locking caps, but uh, do you know what? I've, someone, I've never ever thought about it, if I'm honest with you. I think it's because people still associate it with it being red diesel. Right. And is it a fence to run an engine on red diesel? I think it's a fence to use it now, actually, red diesel, full stop. But they don't, there's, you've, you've only got a locking cap on there, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so you've only got a locking on your fuel, but that's carrying. Not as much, but it's still... It's still a big tank, a, isn't it? It's still, a, it's still a... Massive. It's still a commodity that people can sell. Now, I've always wondered whether it feeds from the up main tank or not. So that's got, it's got two tanks. That one's about, I'd say, half. Half yeah. the size. Half the size, yeah. Um, and with system? the motor in the refrigerated unit being much smaller, that would last, what, five times as long as th the main? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Depending on how long they ran it for. Depending on how long they ran it for. And you can't get away with red now on a refrigerated no. unit? No. Wow. No. 
So what's red for now then? I don't think I don't think they were I think they were stopping using red because red used to be for agricultural as well. Right. And because there's no tax paid on it, is there? Yeah. I didn't think red diesel was still in legal use. I might be wrong. I don't even no, like to look at that. I don't really because I've never used it. I've never had to. So if we were to look, what's the, this one would be a this is sixty four. There we go. This one's sixty four thousand. Yeah, sixty three there as well. So we've got 64. I'm going to be spotting these all the time now, you and know. You will, you will, 64. This is 64,000 here. Forget the Eddie Stobart spotters. This one's, this one's been sold. So I think we've taken the decals, yeah, taken the decals off it, but this is a 65. Right. Plate. So this is probably, I reckon, around about 63. Right. 63. And that's the way that they're easily identifiable is they should all have that obviously and lots of our vehicles are in customers very few are like that in this day and age so but is, are there some good bargains to ha be had then when you eventually do sell and um, we don't tend to get we've got a separate company that we deal with called fridge to go where they go to and they dispose of them as as in when they feel the need to or whatever they get from we don't right we don't tend to get too involved in that side of it got you right so fridge to go, other people to approach if you want a bargain? Um, potentially, yes. Yeah. But I've got a feeling quite a, fair, quite, a, quite a bit of our stuff is either going export because there's a big market in export. Is there which country? All over. Right. Oh, what a fascinating... All over, so... I go around these industrial estates and I just look at something different. And I've learned so much today, so thank you. Um, and they even have their own recovery vehicle, look, with the winch. Get you out of that sticky situation. So, yeah. Um, you pass the charge on to recover, or...? Um, that's... Basically, we do charge on some... To, if the customer's damaged it, it's probably mainly for our own use to get there, so it saves... Oh, right. If we've got a delivery down in... If we've got a new customer <coughs> down in West Wales, for example, instead of taking two people out, yeah. just take one, yeah. drop it down there, leave it for the customer. Um, we like to keep the flags, obviously it's a bit of a wind tunnel down yeah. there in the winter, these tend to get replaced two or three times a year. Yeah, it looks lovely. And, um, everything we do is from, a, 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 from everything is recorded on CCTV, monitored by our headquarters and a third party, so it's a secure working site. Yeah. Nobody but the buzzer is not an automated barrier. So the buzzer is in the office and we need to set, we'll let people in, people sign in. So it's quite a secure site. Yeah, and I was literally here for 30 yeah. seconds and I was spotted. That's so it. So credit to you, thank you, you know so I mean? much. No problem at all, mate. But, so, but yeah, if there's any, I think that's basically it. Yeah, no, you've been great. You've been, some of the people, some of the sites I visit, they're not as helpful. So thank you so much. Well, we've got nothing nothing to hide at the end of the day. And if it if it puts the if it puts the name out there, yes, it will. It, yeah. it just makes it, what sort of viewers do you? Yeah. A lot. Is it? Yeah, a lot. Uh, on YouTube, there's over 120,000 subscribers and I'm on all the platforms, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all of them. So there's good numbers on them all. You'll see how some people react a little bit different to you. You'll see that on there. But people love it when people are like yourself. Well, to be fair, is You're proud of what you do. You know, why we're, not? We're proud of what we yeah. do, but uh, I suppose from another point of view is... When you see someone video in, it's like, oh, hang on, what's going on here? Yeah. Are they scoping the joint out? Yeah. I'm just Cause, learning. Because cause you, cause you don't know. We don't know. And we know how crafting criminals can be. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But, yeah, it's, like I said. Well, we're not, you remain... We are one of the lead, I think we are the leading refrigerated vehicle are you? company right. in, in Europe. Well, I hope at least one customer comes your way from Hopefully, my video. Mate, yeah, no fingers problem. crossed. So Take care, another five, ten minutes, I'll be gone. I'm That's just going to do a drone uh, shot around. Yeah, sure, no problem. And you'll see this video in a week on that channel. I'll have a look, I'll keep on, I'll have a look, I'll, let, I'll comment as well. Thank you so much. So, without any further delay, let's get David up and see what Petty Forrester refrigerated vehicle rental looks like from above. So, as always, we've checked on drone assist. There are no flight restrictions in this area at all. Petty Forrester. Let's have a look at you then, shall we? So it's not very often 
that we get an internal tour, well, a site tour. We didn't go inside any buildings, of course. We don't want to get too close to the working operation, but yeah, wow, thank you so much. We went all the way down the back. We saw the, the new refrigerated containers, shipping containers to import frozen goods now from abroad and put them all on the boat and there's no rush. It's right next to a massive car park. I presume this is something to do with importing cars. Oh, is that where the Amazon Prime vehicles come from? BCA maybe, BCA Bristol or something. Then there's some sort of power station, little gas power station there. So it's nestled within lots and lots of industry. So let's just fly around the place. Let's get them some good footage. The body shop section, just there. And at the end, there was some inspection pits where they go under the vehicle. You don't lift these up on ramps, do you? And the trailer's down at the back, which they've got ready for the customer that you mentioned. And just a long, thin site, really. Right next door to a scrap yard, scrap metal recycling place. And then we come back to the start. So at least they have some drone footage of the place and they can see that their roof is in a very good state of repair. The flat roof there, you know, just in case you wanted to see what it looks like on top. There you go. So let's get the whole site in one shot, do a 360 degree photo for Google Maps and move on. What a pleasant video. And that was Petty Forrester Refrigerated Vehicle Rental here in Avonmouth, Bristol. Yeah, very, very nice guy. Thank you so much for showing me around. The location of the DJ Audits keyring on this video is under this first rock here. You can just see the keyring loop there. So if you are one of the first people to watch the video and you do want a keyring, good luck with that. And let's move on. If you have enjoyed that video, do give it a thumbs up for me and i'll see you on the next one guys and if you're in the market for refrigerated vehicle rental then you know how professional petty forester are if you didn't already nice one